like uh, to greet some of uh, the uh, distinguished guests that we have here today. Uh, the uh, Senate President, uh, Nick Subiri, is uh, present here with us. And uh, the House Speaker, House Speaker <laughs> Martin Romualdez, is also here. He's already busy making deals in the back. Uh, of course, our, the Dean of the Diplomatic Corps, the Apostolic Nuncio to the Philippines, His Excellency, Most Reverend Charles John Brown. The former uh, President and now Deputy Speaker, Gloria Macapagal Arroyo. The Excellencies of the Diplomatic Corps, Foreign Affairs Secretary, Ricky Manalo. And of course, uh, my... Uh, uh, welcome could not, my greetings would not be complete and I would get myself into a great deal of trouble if we do not greet, of course, our beloved First Lady Lisa Araneta Marcos. My fellow workers in government, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. And thank you all for your presence today. I am delighted to see you all today as we welcome the new year with fresh enthusiasm and a renewed sense of hope for the future. The world is slowly recovering from the toll and pounding effect of the COVID-19 pandemic, and I'm happy to say so is the Philippines. As with the global economy, the road to recovery is not easy for the Philippines. We grapple with the pandemic's lingering effects on certain industries and disruptions in the global supply chains. But with a clear vision, standing on sound ground, the Philippines is aiming for a post-recovery that builds and transforms the economy towards more resilience, inclusion, and innovation. The Philippines' strong macroeconomic fundamentals and well-crafted structural reforms have certainly helped the country and held it in good stead, cushioning the shocks of the pandemic on the economy. We take pride uh, that we now can claim that the Philippines is now the fastest rising economy in the Asia-Pacific region. Way back, our growth rate, these are our legislators whose, uh, <laughs> whose uh, help, who, without whose help, we could not have achieved the very, uh, very encouraging numbers that we have. 77.7% uh, 7 .7 growth and uh, that was, our projection was actually 5.7%. And uh, so it is, uh, we can see that uh, hopefully we will continue to surpass the forecasts for uh, the economic indicators of the Philippines. Our, but our growth assumptions remain reasonably ambitious. We are looking to the same growth rate for 2000, that of 2022 between 6 to 7% for this year. Official data shows that unemployment is dropping and that the increase in, in the employment rate and labor force participation is up to 98.5 and 67.5% respectively. Tax collections, investment figures are all moving upwards, which gives us here in the Philippines a sense of careful optimism. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, Post-COVID realities demand the recalibrating of our strategies and focusing on urgent concerns that really matter to our people. We have to go back to the basics, that is food security, job generation, poverty reduction, and managing inflation. These strategies will require new thinking in the way we do things in our bureaucracy, in the way that puts premium on operational efficiency, good management, and good governance. A big part of this strategy, of course, is to draw investments in key economic sectors. I'm sure that with the talks that we have had with many of your members of the diplomatic corps, you are familiar with our priorities in agriculture, renewable energy and infrastructure, and ensuring opportunities and investment that lead to, that lead to and translate into actual projects that will be felt by the ordinary Filipino. My recent trip to Davos for the World Economic Forum was particularly important because it had provided an opportunity to herald the good news about the Philippine economy and announce our plans and programs to global business leaders. 
I also unveiled the plan for the creation of a sovereign wealth fund, the Maharlika Fund. This will diversify our financial portfolio by creating new revenue streams for the country. The economic team of the executive branch is ready to close the work with Congress, with all stakeholders, to thresh out well-crafted law for the fund's creation. With the current growth momentum, the Philippines is poised to reach upper middle income status very soon. This is a daunting but achievable milestone and the development well earned and long overdue. We want this to have meaning and impact to the lives of more than 110 million Filipinos and to set the future generations of Filipinos on a more robust path to social and economic well-being. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, I just uh, rolled out uh, the Philippine Development Plan that will serve as a blueprint for the country for the next six years. It's a plan for economic and social transformation. I urge our friends in the diplomatic community to work with us in achieving our development goals as laid out in the plan through partnerships and cooperations with your respective governments and also your private sectors. Let us discuss opportunities where our countries can participate to the mutual benefit of the Philippines and your countries. While our time and resources are focused on managing domestic affairs, this administration continues to attach great importance to our external relations. For our foreign policy is one that pursues international engagements on the basis of our national interest and in cognizance of the interest we share with fellow nations in pursuit of peace, security, and prosperity. ASEAN continues to be a cornerstone of Philippine foreign policy. We aim to elevate relations with our bilateral and multilateral partners. We are a staunch champion of multilateralism and remain invested in working with partners in building a stronger United Nations, one that is more fair, more constructive, more united. The Philippines counts on your support for our candidature for a non-permanent seat in the UN Security Council for the term 2027 to 2028. You will excuse my little bit of campaigning for the Philippines and our membership. The Philippines bid stands on the strong foundation of our well-recognized contributions to the shaping of a global rules-based architecture that places people and human dignity at the center and respects the sovereignty of nations. The legacies of the Philippines as a responsible global citizen, I dare say, are solid. On this note, may I invite everyone to join me in a toast. <laughs> to our friends from the diplomatic community, may we continue to strengthen the bond of our countries for the mutual benefit of our peoples and our countries. To my able colleagues in government, may we be guided by the Almighty as we continue to fulfill our mandate in the service of the Filipino people. And to my countrymen, our journey is a collective effort where everyone has a stake. Let us all work together for a brighter future, for a better Philippines. Thank you very much and mabuhay po kayong lahat. Holy See Ambassador Charles John Brown III Kuwait Ambassador Musaid Saleh Al Due Morocco Ambassador Mohamed Rida El Fasi Serbia Ambassador Slobodan Marinkovic Yemen Ambassador Adel Mohammed Ali B. Bahamid
Czech Republic. Ambassador Jana Shadiva. Papua New Guinea. Ambassador Betty Palazzo. Singapore Ambassador Gerard Hallway Hong Germany Ambassador Anke Reifenstuhl South Africa Ambassador Martina Entombizodwa Radebi Nechitenze China Ambassador Wang Xilian Palestine Ambassador Saleh Asaad Saleh Mohammed Iran Ambassador Ali Reza Tutunchan Vietnam Ambassador Wang Hui Chun India Ambassador Shambhu Santa Kumaran Hungary Ambassador Tita Nilia Tot Russia Ambassador Marat Pavlov Pakistan Ambassador Kazi Imtiaz Ahmed Finland Ambassador Yuha Marcos Picoe Egypt Ambassador Ahmed Shehabeldin Ibrahim Abdullah European Union Ambassador Luke Veron Brazil Ambassador Antonio Jose Maria de Sosa e Silva Ambassador Kim In Chun France Ambassador Michel Bocos Colombia Ambassador Marcela Fernandez Belgium Ambassador Michel Paris United Kingdom Ambassador Lord Bofis Italy Ambassador Marco Clemente Sweden Ambassador Annika Thunborg Armenia Ambassador Varam Kazoya Israel Ambassador Ilan Flus Nigeria Ambassador for Lokemi Ibiduni Akinleye Bangladesh Ambassador F.M. Borhan Udi Ireland 
Ambassador William John Carlos. Romania Ambassador Radutsa Dana Matake Indonesia Ambassador Agus Wijoyo Argentina Ambassador Ricardo Luis Bocalandro Greece Ambassador Ioannis Periotis Thailand Ambassador Tul Trisorak United States of America Ambassador Barry K. Loss Clarkson Netherlands Ambassador Maria Alfonso Magdalena Girard Austria Ambassador Johan Brieger Norway Ambassador Christian Halas Lister Denmark Ambassador Franz Mikkel Melvin Turkey Ambassador Niazi Evren Akyon Spain Ambassador Miguel Utrai Delgado Laos Ambassador Sonsai Vanasai Mongolia Ambassador Enshbayar Sasor Barang Canada Ambassador David Bruce Hartman Oman Ambassador Nasser bin Said bin Abdullah Al Manwari 